Clearly, I lost track of time. I was getting coffee. Yeah. I, yeah. I swear I had enough time to go get coffee. Clearly, I you don't. Pro you probably did. Just start <sighs> with. I blame the coffee pot. It took too it's long. That, that happens sometimes. Took too long. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I'll have a coat on later. later. I kind of feel naked. Oh, we're doing the thing. Oh, yeah, we we're back the... here again. Is it ah, delayed? You can't, you can't really it. tell in this. Anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, on the no, water floor. Like no coat look. You do? Yeah. Okay. Normally, it's only a severe weather thing. Oh. You know, you're really working not, hard yeah, on the weather severe, scene. Not severe weather. No, just getting no, coffee nothing crazy. Attire. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, just fire weather. That's what we're tracking yeah. again today. So, on the weather scene here, as you're heading out the door here this morning in Great Falls, you can expect about 54 degrees right now. Humidity setting at 53 uh, wind already starting to pick up out of the southwest at about 12 miles per hour right now in Great Falls. As for the capital right now, we're looking at 57 degrees. Humidity sitting at about 53%. Some wind out of the northwest, three miles per hour. Winds across the board, not too bad, but again, that's going to be the major factor here today is strong wind across the board. We're going to see those wind gusts uh, get up to about 20 to 30 and 30 to 40 later this afternoon, and that's really going to be the main contributing factor to the fire danger throughout the board. As for your weather headlines here today, we're looking at strong wind increasing the fire danger. A cold front is going to move through though tomorrow, backing off those temperatures a little bit, and then we'll get a hot again toward the tail end of this weekend. More on your detailed forecast is coming up shortly, Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. We continue on Firewatch this morning where firefighters are getting a handle on a fire in Fergus County. Two wildfires broke out there on Friday evening, while the smaller of the two fires is now 100% contained. The larger fire northwest of Winifred is still burning. According to firefighters, the Judith River Road fire near Winifred is now 70% contained. At last check, the fire's total acreage was around 1,100, indicating little growth since it broke out Friday night. Meanwhile, fire officials with the Helena Lewis and Clark National Forest say growth was minimal on the Fields Gulch fire, burning about six miles south of Lincoln. That fire is reporting at five acres now with zero percent containment, but the Lincoln Ranger District's Type 4 team transitioned to a Type 3 team because of the complex terrain in that area. Crews established an anchor point to work from and build containment lines. A Type 1 and Type 2 helicopter are both working along with about 60 crew members. Right now, there are no evacuations, trail or road closures. A water tender will be spraying Dalton Mountain Road to keep the dust down. If you are in that area, drive with caution to allow for fire traffic to pass. Well, state public health leaders said on Monday they aren't aware of any COVID-19 tests that have been lost. This comes after concerns about potential missing tests were raised online. MTN's Jonathan Amberian has more on this issue. MTN News had been forwarded an online post that said about 7,000 COVID-19 tests might have been lost. We looked into those reports. The Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services, which has been overseeing COVID testing in the state, says it has not heard of any missing test results in the Helena area or elsewhere in Montana. In a statement Monday, a department spokesperson said, We believe there might be confusion as to the recent backlog of test results at Quest that has since been resolved. This number of tests was also 7,000. These tests have been processed and the results sent back to the ordering provider. Montana is one of several states that saw delays in getting COVID test results as the number of tests being processed at out-of-state labs spiked in recent weeks. The state is now working with another lab that has processed about 10,000 Montana tests. DPHHS says the turnaround time there has been about two to three days. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Montana is also still processing tests at the state lab in Helena, and leaders are working on testing partnerships with Montana hospitals and Montana State University to further expand in-state capacity. Helena College, University of Montana, is gearing up for the new school year and changes for COVID-19. On Monday, students picked up CARES kits, which include a washable face covering, chamois cloths, and a spray bottle of sanitizer for cleaning their space on campus. Students and staff are asked this fall to take care of each other by cleaning work areas before they sit down and when they leave. Students are actively encouraged to stay home this fall if they aren't feeling well, and professors will work with them so their schoolwork doesn't suffer as a result. They spent a lot of time structuring their courses so that they're able to provide both face-to-face -face instruction, that experience that we're used to, but also find mechanisms to make sure the material is available for anyone who's not able to come to campus. 
Helena College will also be taking attendance this year for each class to help with contact tracing should a student or staff member test positive for COVID. About a month ago, a Great Falls Salon closed after two of their employees tested positive. The salon has since reopened, and while it was closed for about two weeks, management took the opportunity to sanitize the building and work to prevent any other outbreaks. Customers and staff now have more thorough sanitation stations in place and must complete temperature checks before entering the facility. Entry is also limited to clients in order to keep occupancy down. The owner of Studio Montage says while she has not seen a change in business, she has seen a change in her customers. I have several people stop me every day thanking us for being so transparent and for shutting down and for um, putting the safety of the community first. So that's it's just been very encouraging. And all of her employees have tested negative for coronavirus since those original two and have now safely returned to work. The Montana State Health Department is reporting 65 new COVID cases. Cascade County has 54 active cases. Right now, Lewis and Clark has 56. More than 3,500 people have recovered. President Trump's daily coronavirus briefing was interrupted Monday by a shooting just outside the White House grounds. The Secret Service says one of its officers opened fire on a suspect who was thought to be armed. The man was hospitalized after being wounded. The president returned to the podium after a break of about 10 minutes. Well, we're taking a closer look at the chemical the EPA just approved to repel and kill bugs like mosquitoes, fleas, and ticks. It's called nucatone, and many people have been consuming it without knowing it. That's because it's found naturally in things like grapefruit and cedar trees. Its distinct grapefruit smell has also been a staple ingredient in perfumes. The APA found nucatone perfectly safe for people and pets, as well as mammals, birds, fish, and bees. With the EPA's approval comes a requirement that all products using it from now on be registered and tested, it could become a preferred alternative to synthetic bug sprays. And the Trump administration is expected to relax rules on methane emissions. The new rules will lift regulations set by the Obama administration that require oil and gas companies to use technology to detect and fix methane leaks in pipes and storage tanks. The Environmental Protection Agency says the new rules will free the oil and gas industries from what it called crippling regulations. The Trump administration is expected to announce the new rule before Friday. It's 5.08 now on, on your Monday, Tuesday morning. Bobcats. Coming up on Montana This Morning, we're learning more about football being moved from fall to spring for the Big Sky Conference. And later in your weather forecast, we are definitely tracking a heightened fire danger here today. We're looking at temperatures in the low 90s, a lot of dry air out there, something to keep in mind. Chain fires, you have a loose chain out there, throw some sparks into that dry vegetation on the side of the road, so you could easily kick off a fire there. Just something to keep in mind as you're heading out and about. More on your forecast coming up shortly. Welcome. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Welcome back. We're glad to have you along on this Tuesday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. It is August 11th, time now is 511. It's been a few days since the Big Sky Conference canceled the season. MTN's John Miller has Jeff Choate's thoughts from a Monday afternoon meeting. That's head coach Jeff Choate spoke to the media about Friday's news that the Big Sky Conference pushed the football season to the spring of 2021. Here we are literally on a day that's been circled on a calendar for nine months. And they're finally going, hey, by the way, we're going to push practice, we're going to push to the spring. His players had varying opinions of the news. Some guys were, Let, let's play no matter what. Some guys were like, I don't want to give up my senior year for something meaningless. And so that was kind of what we were managing internally. Choke gave his thoughts on the move and the problems that can bring. I mean, you basically be doing kind of fall camp, winter camp, really right after the first of the year. Because you can't go, if you're going to do it at all, you better have this thing done by mid-April. And then you got to reboot sometime in early June to prepare for the fall of 21. Now, the one thing I will say is we cannot try to force this to happen in the spring at the expense of the fall of 21. I think we can all survive a year without this, but two falls is going to be devastating to our game and uh, you know, possibly to a lot of athletic departments and football programs nationwide. If there was football in the spring, the Bobcats would be at a disadvantage, given the fact they likely wouldn't be able to practice. Well, our field doesn't drain very well. Our field usually isn't playable in January and February, and sometimes even in early March. 
So we're not going to really be practicing football. We're just going to be doing whatever. In the end, Choate said he wasn't going to cry into his beer, but jokingly said the team will celebrate their 2020 accomplishments. We are undefeated in the 2020 season. We're going to claim uh, another state championship. And because we were the last team practicing in the Big Sky, we're going to claim the Big Sky championship as well. Uh, we'll order some rings, have some T-shirts done up. In Bozeman, John Miller, MTN Sports. That's right. Keep the positivity flowing right <laughs> on the weather scene here today. It is going to be hot and dry, so the fire danger definitely ramping up here today. We're going to start out at about 60 degrees by 8 a.m. this morning. Well into the 80s, 90s this afternoon. Plenty of sunshine to go around. No moisture to speak of. Looking at about 60 as you're heading out in the capital there again, pushing temperatures around 80 degrees by the noon hour. 90 uh, or just over 90 this afternoon for your daytime high. Take a little bit closer look at some of the fire concerns next. And welcome back. Time now is 516 on this. Uh, what are we sitting at? Tuesday, Tuesday already. Mm -hmm. Well, the <coughs> what? <well>, jeez. <laughs> Golly, it's right happening again. Yeah, the Perseid meteor shower will peak overnight tonight. It's known for the uh, uh, producing a large number of meteors and fireballs. Ooh, Ooh. That sounds fun, which <laughs> lasts longer than the average meteor. Perseid's meteor is caused by dust and debris left behind from the trail of the comet Swift Tuttle. I like that name. Swift, Swift Tuttle. Tuttle. Yeah, so NASA says the best viewing will be from uh, about midnight to two until dawnish on Wednesday morning. So you can still see the Perseids through later this month. NASA says the moon's position above the horizon might make peak viewing a little bit tough, but that facing northeast will help improve your chances. Okay, so if you don't want to get up, things like that, you should be able to watch it online. NASA has a live stream starting at 7 o'clock our time tonight until dawn on Wednesday. Oh, there you go. You can go back and review it. You can go back and We're review. Talking, we should be able to see it on our way into work. I hope so. Probably. Yeah, as long as it's, you know, clear. Yeah, light pollution no. isn't too bad. All that no, looking yeah. pretty mm -hmm. decent uh, actually, and I've even got a forecast for it. The Aww, meteor shower at, forecast. All right, you. let's roll that now, and I'll show you exactly <laughs> what we're tracking here in the terms of conditions here tonight. So again, you want to look toward the northeast. So the peak, like Shannon said, is going to be tonight through the 13th of August. And 40 to 50 meteors per hour. Wow. That's, that's pretty actually impressive. Quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. So overnight conditions in Great Falls are going to be looking at 53 degrees, mostly clear skies as well. All right. Terms of your forecast here today, starting things off still slightly chilly this morning at about 51 degrees, much more mild though in the capital already at 57, looking at the low to mid 50s in northeastern Montana. Humidity levels. All right. So in the morning, the humidity level or the percentage is all reflected by the temperature. Temperature. So uh, it's still a little bit high right now, but these humidity levels are really, really going to drop off the charts later in the day, getting down to 10 to 15%. So that tells us very, very dry conditions, and it's going to be another hot one. 90 degrees in Gray Falls, 91 in the capital, looking at the mid to high 90s throughout the eastern plains. So with that said, Fire weather warning again yesterday. It was a watch. They bumped it up to a warning. That's going to take us through Wednesday at 9 p.m. Telling us again that we have all the variables for uh, if a fire was to kick off, it's going to spread very rapidly. So again, we showed you this yesterday. The fire weather forecast combines a lot of different things here. Instead of just showing you wind or just showing you humidity, combined them all into one graphic and it shows how things are going to play out. So again, the biggest area of concern is going to be from Great Falls to Cut Bank in the immediate vicinity of the Rocky Mountain front there. You'll notice touching into uh, definitely an elevated concern there. So strong wind about 30 to 40 miles per hour in the terms of wind gusts sustained could be 15 to 20 miles per hour. Again, we got a lot of dry air to work with and that's pretty much going to take us through the day here today with those fire weather uh, conditions finally kind of tapering off later in the evening. Overnight lows at about 53 in Great Falls, 54 in the capital, still hanging on to a few 60s in eastern Montana. Tomorrow we've got one two cold fronts moving through. So temperatures are going to back off, but we are going to stay windy and we're going to stay dry. These cold fronts look to be relatively dry. Maybe a spotty storm or two kicking up as that second cold front pushes through into the evening, but really for the most part, uh, just a bit of an increase in clouds overnight. So again, if you did want to see the meteor shower tonight, it's going to be a lot better than tomorrow night. But again, with that wind, that's why that fire weather warning is going to stay in effect through Wednesday. Tomorrow's high temperatures, 83 in Gray 
Falls, 85 in the capital, flirting with the triple digits throughout the eastern plains. And on Thursday, we're going to back those temperatures off even more following that cold front, especially in the eastern plains as that colder air continues to invade. 79 for a daytime high in Great Falls, 80 degrees in the capital. Over the next few, here's how it all comes together for us, looking at 90 degrees today. 83 tomorrow, a little bit of an increase in clouds <clears throat> following that cold front. And again, we're going to continue to see those 80s through the weekend. Next week, though, getting hot again. As for the capital, 91 degrees here, mid 80s on Wednesday. And we're going to stay a little bit cooler through the work week. And next hot day looks to be Sunday, bumping those temperatures back up to the 80s and 90s, Shannon. Jason, thank you. It is 521 here on your Tuesday. Still to come on Montana this morning. Footage floating in how some Montanans are trying to reconnect, reconnect some mysterious video with its owner. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. And welcome back. Time now is 523 on your Tuesday morning. And a father and son need your help getting mysterious video footage from 2018 back to its rightful owner. Hamptons Mar and Sue spoke with the family and son to see how you can help solve this. I see you again. Let's wait for the wind to kind of. Uh, it's the time. Take a good look at this young man. This is the young man Carl Kochigan and his son Peter are searching for. I saw a little red thing and I wanted to know what it was, so I went over to the other dock and it was a little rechargeable battery connected to a GoPro. And I was curious about like why it was there, so I took it up and plugged the SD card into a computer and it had uh, a, like three hours of footage of it on a balloon. Peter says he found a mysterious GoPro attached to a balloon on a dock near their vacation home on Finley Point. But Carl says what was even stranger was when and where the GoPro looked to be from. It managed to catch some jet stream, flew over, and we can see the final footage. You can see it kind of, I think the helium balloon burst and you kind of see it spiraling and tippling and whatever. And finally it came to rest um, in Polson Bay on top of ice. But the date on the video card said February of 2018. And here we were in July 29th of 2020. Miraculously, Carl says the video survived. Looking through the video, Carl tried piecing together the balloon in camera's trip. So we saw originally, and you look at the video, is that it looks like this river, there looks like it might be a lake. And then there was this kind of unique airport that had at least four runways in an X pattern. After studying the video and its landmarks, Carl says he believes the camera and balloon originated in Moses Lake, Washington, and then traveled over to Polson. Peter says working on solving this mystery of who this is and how to get his camera back to him with his dad during coronavirus has been fun. There hasn't been very much stuff to do since we can't go to a lot of places. So this has been a fun little project to work on. They both just want to return the video to the rightful owner, so they gave the video to us. We're trying to connect up with that boy um, or, and or his parents so that you know, he can get his footage back. In Finley Point, Marin Sioux, MTN News. It is interesting that it made it from kind of central Washington yeah. over to western Montana, yeah. and it appears to be two years old, the footage. Yeah, that's even more impressive. Yeah. That's even more impressive, but well, that hopefully. is pretty cool. Yeah, I'd be one of those that would sit there and watch it for the full like, I don't know how However long it took, on it yeah, and examining like zooming in on stuff to see what you yeah. can figure out on there. That is cool. Hopefully, you know, maybe we'll be able to have a follow up story on this. Yeah, no the, kidding. The connection Connect made the and get that back out together. Where that yeah, video stemmed from. But, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty kind of impressive crazy. there. Interesting right? find. Well, on the weather scene again, that same wind is going to be a talking point here today. What is going on with my graphic today? <laughs> Boy, that's weird. Well, at least it's a pretty view in the eye cam. <laughs> oh, it's the camera. Look at the camera up there. Not, huh? Not Whole it. top half of the camera's gone today. I don't know what's going on. Okay. 54 degrees. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not surprised. 54 <laughs> in Gray Falls, wind out of the southwest, 12 miles per hour. Currently in the capital here on the Opportunity <laughs> Bank eye cam, we're sitting at 57 degrees. And again, fire variables, a big talking point here today. It's going to be hot. It's going to be dry and a lot of wind out there. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you are going to be outside, just be very cognizant of the heightened fire danger. 90 degrees in Great Falls, 91 in the capital, windy. Uh, some wind in northeastern Montana, not quite as bad. And then Cut Bank at about 84 degrees today.
Well, many U.S. shoppers say they're thinking about stocking up on groceries again, and job losses in the shale industry are accelerating. Yeah, Jane King is in New York with those stories and more. Job cuts accelerated in July, and the outlook may worsen as new COVID-19 cases stifle economic activity. That's according to the Petroleum Equipment and Services Association. The U.S. oil field services sector shed 9,300 jobs last month, a 43% increase from June's losses. Well, electric truck maker and Tesla rival Nikola just snagged a big contract. The company announced it will develop and produce electric vehicles for the trash company Republic Services over the next three years. The trucks will begin joining Republic's fleet in 2023. Well, the most recent acreage data from the government showed corn and cotton plantings in particular were far below initial expectations with corn seedings in June dropping the most in 37 years compared to where they were expected to be in March. A demand for ethanol, a corn-based biofuel, blended into gasoline, cratered as COVID-19 cases spread across the country and people stayed home and some farmers just decided not to plant corn. Cotton prices dropped 30% during planting season as global shutdowns hit demand for new clothing. And if the coronavirus pandemic again forces public lockdowns, 53% of American consumers say they will stockpile groceries as well as hygienic and school supplies. That's according to a survey by CPG Sales. Of the shoppers polled, 38% said they had stocked up on groceries at the start of the COVID crisis and would do so again if another shutdown occurs. That scenario would also spur another 15% of respondents to build up their stores of grocery, even though they did not stockpile at the earlier pandemic. From New York, I'm Jane King with your Ag and Energy Report. This half hour on Montana this morning. That's a new Interesting. one. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be talking about a lot of things, including weather, as well as Mike Cooney coming up later in the show. We'll be also talking about Great Falls Public Schools unveiling their plan late last night for the upcoming school year, as well as some COVID cases prompting the Law Enforcement Academy to make some changes. We'll have those stories coming up. Montana This Morning starts now. Good morning. Hello. Oh, <laughs> oh we oh, went away. There went. We went away. Hello. Anywho, there we're we here. are. Yes. Bright and early. <laughs> yeah. We're glad to have you along. It's Tuesday morning. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it's a Tuesday. It's a Monday, Tuesday. It's a Monday, Tuesday. Monday, Tuesday. Uh, no, yeah. so we were out power raking the lawn yesterday. Yeah. I'm a little and my allergic allergies today. are mm -hmm. Are you doing okay? You see, it was getting you yesterday. It was getting me yesterday. I'm very sneezy today still because all of all, I think all that dust like, is I was, still I hanging was good. out. Oh, man. Well, I keep like, I sound like a little boy going through, you know what? Like, I can't like talk like my voice keeps cracking out because I have like the allergies. It's you all know, yeah, it's all, all the allergies, all the dust, yeah, the grass, it's all been of an that. Interesting mm -hmm. one. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hang on. So hear me squeaking In for a over ride here. today. Yeah. I know. Yeah. If you hear me squeaking over here, that's exactly what's going, going through on. Going through another but, round uh, of puberty. It's yeah. Fine. Evidently. Yeah. But anywho, on the weather scene here this morning, uh, hot and dry conditions are really going to be the main talking point throughout the area. High fire danger. So 54 degrees in Great Falls on the Opportunity Bank. I can. I was thinking the the camera was glitching out. But that's just the sky, Shannon. It's just just, just the dark. sky. Okay. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Humidity sitting at 53 in the capital. 57 degrees as you're waking up here this morning. And downtown Fort Benton looking good as always. Catching a truck driving by there. Uh, 54 degrees and humidity sitting at 67. Okay, allergy forecast. I can uh, attest for this one. Grass is. <laughs> Grass is still high. Trees, yeah. unless you're uh, allergic to the cotton, you're doing all right there, but that's kind of acting up and obviously mold and ragweed pretty low. Today's UV uh, index sitting at eight, so burn time less than 25 minutes. Do keep that in mind if you have plans outside. And weather headlines, strong wind today increasing the fire danger. We do have a cold front moving through tomorrow, backing off the temperatures a bit, but we are still gonna stay very dry and hot as we head through the next couple of days before we kind of cool down as Thursday, Friday rolls around. But again, it's all going to rebound once again on Sunday as yet another high pressure ridge builds across the state, and that's gonna bump those temperatures yet again next week. So we'll have all the details on that coming up very shortly, Shannon. All right, Jason, thank you. Great Falls Public Schools will officially reopen on August 26th. MTN's Matt Holzaffel was at the Board of Trustees meeting last night. He breaks down the plan for this upcoming school year. 
Monday night's Great Falls Public Schools meeting featured hours of discussion, including lengthy talks on the finalized reopening plan for the 2020-2021 school year. In the end, the plan passed with a vote of 5-2, to two, with trustees Bill Bronson and Teresa Schreiner voting against adopting the plan. The plan is a very good one, but I think it's a plan uh, that's most appropriate when we have better slowed the spread of COVID-19 in this community. Schreiner echoed that statement saying she approved of the plan, but didn't feel that the timing was right. It's not that I was against opening schools. I just ho hopefully wanted to open schools at a later date, so I just didn't feel a rush. Some of the highlights of the plan include offering both face-to-face -face and remote learning options to students, requiring masks in most settings, limiting spectators at student events, and rearranging some schedules to make physical distancing easier. We've had to uh, sit down and, and work through a lot of the protocols and a lot of the uh, the scenarios and so forth together with our health officials, with our community, and um, and with our staff and our unions and so forth. So we have to be flexible and adaptable. Board members agreed that this plan is likely to change between now and the start of school on August 26th, and even beyond that. That's one thing we've learned and seen throughout this pandemic is that things crop up and come at you that were unexpected. And so you've got to be able to be adaptable and, and flexible to deal with those things and then collaborative. You can find the full details of the reopening plan on our website. In Great Falls, Matt Holzaffel, MTN News. Now, should any students or staff members test positive for COVID-19, the district will work with the Cascade City County Health Department to determine the best course of action. The Montana Law Enforcement Academy has closed for two weeks following a positive COVID-19 test by a student. Staff were notified on Friday morning of the positive case and closed following the campus's COVID protocol. The entire class and instructors that had direct contact with the student will be quarantining for 14 days and facilities will be thoroughly cleaned. The academy is expected to resume classes August 24th and cadets will train through their weekends to make up for lost time. Law Enforcement Academy will also be increasing some of their COVID protocols once students return. We had been training uh, all through COVID and with uh, uh, previous classes we'd locked them down. And not allow them to leave campus. So then I already told the class on the way out the door Friday, you know, plan on being locked down for the duration when you come back, just to limit exposure in the community. Steiner praised the cadets for being honest and upfront from the beginning about symptoms and test results. Students at the academy were pre-screened for COVID before arriving and monitored daily. The Montana State Health Department is reporting 65 new COVID cases statewide. Cascade County has 54 active cases. Lewis and Clark has 56. More than 3,500 people have recovered so far. Time now is 536 here on your Tuesday morning. Coming up on Montana this morning, we'll hear from Montana's congressional delegation about delivery days with U.S. delivery delays with USPS. And later in your weather forecast, it's a very hot day on tap. No changes to the burn restrictions as of right now. Still a couple uh, local burn bans there into western Montana stage one. Smoke not too bad, a little bit drifting into northwestern Montana. And of course, some active fires there out east. More on your detailed forecast is coming up shortly. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. We're glad to have you along. Cut the neat view out of the iCam right now at this hour. It is 539 here on your Tuesday morning. Thanks for making us a part of your day. Montana's congressional delegation doesn't always agree on controversial issues, especially when it involves the Trump administration. But when it comes to concerns about action taken by the new postmaster general and its effects on the Postal Service, they're all speaking out. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison has details. In memos made public last month, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy said he is restricting overtime by postal workers and taking other cost-cutting steps that could delay mail delivery. He has said the financially strapped Postal Service needs to operate more like a business. But Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester says Congress has appropriated funds to help the Postal Service weather the coronavirus pandemic, but that money has not been released. We've got a head of the Postal Service that wants to destroy the Postal Service. He's doing everything he can do to destroy it. We've got to hold that person accountable and we've got to make sure the Postal Service is there. The Republican members of Montana's delegation aren't happy either. 
Both U.S. Senator Steve Daines and Representative Greg Gianforte sent letters to DeJoy last week demanding that he reverse directives that are delaying mail delivery times. Daines and Tester also are co-sponsors of a bill introduced a month ago that would create a $25 billion emergency fund to keep the Postal Service afloat and require DeJoy to submit a plan for the service's long-term solvency. I am concerned about that, particularly for a state like Montana where rural communities are heavily dependent on the Postal Service, particularly for health care. Uh, so many senior citizens and other Montanans receive their medications through the United States Postal Service. Senator Tester said a well-functioning Postal Service is even more vital now, as millions more Americans will likely be voting by mail this coming election. Not only is the mail important for just doing regular old business and keeping folks healthy, but Vote by mail is kind of nice in a state like Montana, and we had a record turnout during the primary because of it. I believe that this democracy is set up so everybody that's a citizen here should have an opportunity to vote. So what happens now? As we've reported before on this issue, there's always plenty of tough talk in Congress about fixing and preserving the Postal Service. But here we are, still waiting for action. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Mike Cooney said he's taking his opposition to a sales tax one step further by asking voters themselves to ban it permanently. He also reiterated his charge that his Republican opponent, Greg Gianforte, is a sales tax supporter. Cooney and his running mate, Casey Schreiner, said they're launching a referendum to place a statewide sales tax ban in Montana's constitution. The referendum needs the signatures of more than 51,000 registered voters to make it on the general election ballot in 2022. Cooney says the ban is needed to permanently block Republicans like Gianforte from advancing and passing a statewide sales tax. The Gianforte campaign dismissed Cooney's proposal as a publicity stunt and said Gianforte has made it clear that he opposes a sales tax under any circumstances. Cooney, however, says he doesn't believe Gianforte and that voters need to send him a message. No sales tax, no statewide sales tax, not today, not two years from now, not ever. Now let me repeat that just in case any multimillionaires from New Jersey are listening. No statewide sales tax, not today, not two years from now, not ever. The Montana Republican Party also noted that Cooney requested a sales tax bill in 2005 while he was a state senator. Cooney said that was just a request for research on the issue and that he voted no that year on a Republican sales tax bill that failed. Well, politics at their finest. Well, on the weather scene here this morning, we're going to be uh, tracking another dry and hot day throughout central Montana. Temperatures are going to be on the rise here today. Humidity levels really dropping. That's going to be a big factor and wind kicking up as well. Likely going to see some wind gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour. As for the temperatures in the capital here today, well into the 80s and 90s. And again, looking at those percentages falling off the charts. More on your detailed forecast is coming up very shortly. Storm Tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Well, good morning, friends. Still a little bit chilly in Great Falls at this hour. 51 degrees and 50 in Lewistown right now. Much more mild, though, in the capital at 57, looking at the mid-50s in northeastern Montana. Humidity level is going to be a big talking point today. Again, uh, you got to think about the humidity percentage. It's always correlated to the temperature, so it's rather high right now, but it is going to drop very, very quickly as the day plays out. We've already seen it drop over the past half hour or so. 90 degrees in Great Falls today for your temperature, looking at 91 in the capital, well into the 90s in eastern Montana. So with that hot, dry air and some wind in the mix, National Weather Service does have a fire weather warning going into effect today, taking us through Wednesday evening as well. So what I've done here is uh, this graphic, instead of just showing you wind or just showing you humidity, this one combines all those factors and uh, kind of shows us where the greatest potential for the fire weather will be today. So as the day starts to play out between Great Falls and Cutbank, pretty usual suspect there for some strong wind coming off of the mountains, that's going to be the area we'll really 
likely uh, be a major concern here, especially as the day plays out. The strongest wind is expected there, lowest humidity levels there as well, and of course, uh, some pretty hot temperatures. That's not to say a fire couldn't kick off very easily in eastern Montana. This is just the area where the weather is going to play the biggest factor as the day plays out. Overnight lows still somewhat on the mild side, looking at 53 in Great Falls, 54 in the capital, still some 60s in northeastern Montana. Tomorrow, we don't just have one, but two cold fronts that are going to move through the state. As those cold fronts move through, we're still going to stay windy. They are going to keep those daytime highs a little bit on the cooler side, but again, with the wind, the fire danger is still going to be very high. We'll likely see some clouds build in late into the day and overnight. So if you did want to check out the meteor shower tonight would be better than tomorrow night. All right, with that said, tomorrow's temperatures 83 degrees in Great Falls, 85 in the capital, touching into a couple of uh, almost triple digits throughout the eastern plains. And by Thursday, we're going to be even cooler following that cold front, looking at 79 in Great Falls, 80 in the capital with some mid 80s throughout the eastern plains. Kind of the big picture as we head through the next few days here again, we're up to Thursday. That main cold front is going to continue to pass out of the region. That cooler air is going to stick with us and uh, not really looking at any moisture either. Maybe a little shower or two over the mountains, but really the big impact here. Cooler air, but we are tracking yet another high pressure ridge that is going to move in over the weekend. 90 degrees in Gray Falls today. We're going to get a little bit cooler over the next couple of days following that cold front, but then again, Sunday into Monday, we're going to get hot well into the 80s and 90s and forecast models are starting to uh, come into agreement on that, that it's likely going to stick around next week as well. 91 degrees, high fire danger through Wednesday. Cooler though, at least through Saturday before we get hot again next week. As for Fort Benton today, 91, 88 degrees tomorrow. Cooler Thursday, Friday, Saturday and hot again next week, Shannon. All right, Jason, thanks. People who live near Cascade are saying they're without power this morning. Northwestern Energy's outage map shows more than 1,000 customers without power right now. According to the site, it could be restored by noon today. Still to come on Montana this morning, celebrating in style, a woman marks her 103rd birthday by crossing a couple things off her bucket list. Her story is next. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. 5.52, eight minutes away from the top <laughs> of the hour here on your Tuesday. So a Michigan woman got her first tattoo to mark her 103rd birthday. Dorothy Pollock decided to check some bucket list items off after spending months in isolation during coronavirus lockdowns at her nursing home. She says weeks after being discharged out of nowhere, she just decided she wanted a tat. Yeah, and get this, <laughs> a grandmother got a tattoo of a frog, as you can see there. She says that's the one thing that she loves more than beer and burgers. I love it. I love it. <laughs> My kind of gal there. <laughs> tattoo artist says that he didn't even see her flinch once. She's uh, absolutely in love with her new ink after the tattoo. Pollock uh, crossed something else off her bucket list. That was riding a motorcycle. I love it. Go get a tattoo. Out, yeah. Go hop on a motorcycle. Golly. Talk about go an inspiration. Go have a beer and burger. Well, there you go. Like, <laughs> you know, it. you get tattoos. You're always worried you get old and they're getting all wrinkly and nasty, but there you go. Just That's the ticket. Get them then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Then you're good to go. But. I like it. My inspiration there. There you go. Bucket you're going to wait till you're 103 to, to get a tattoo. Get a little ink. We'll see. Maybe we'll there see. You go. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's a good way to celebrate, though. I think yeah, that is. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, that's super cool. I love it. Well, on the weather scene, <laughs> it's going to be a hot and dry day today. Humidity levels really dropping off the charts. Currently in Gray Falls on the U.S. Bank ICAM, 54 degrees. Some wind already out of the southwest at 10 miles per hour. Humidity. Kind of right in the middle there at about 53%. It is going to drop though pretty rapidly as the sun starts coming up here. 57 in the capital, not much in the way of wind right now, but again, increase in the wind later this afternoon. And uh, just kind of keeping you up to date on the drought conditions here. Not a lot of change so far, just kind of a little dry patch along the high line. It's more or less down into south central Montana, touching into Wyoming. That's where the worst drought is right now, uh, even touching into extreme conditions there. So very, very dry along the southern portions of the state and southwestern Montana. As for today's forecast, 90 degrees, plenty of sunshine tomorrow or today in the capital. 91 as well, sunny skies. See a little bit of an increase in clouds there in Cup Bank at 84, but overall it's a hot one. High fire danger. Just be careful out there. All right, stay with us. Your Farm and Ranch Report with the Montana Ag Network is next.
Coming up this half hour on Montana This Morning, Firewatch, an update on two fires burning in central Montana. Plus, we're looking into a rumor that thousands of COVID-19 tests were lost, what we've uncovered so far. And later, goodbye bugs. A new repellent spray has been approved by the EPA. We'll tell you what's in it. Montana This Morning starts now. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good morning to you. We're glad to have you along on this Tuesday. It's been quite a ride so far. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Shannon News. <laughs> I'm Jason Laird. Yeah, my allergies have been acting mm -hmm. up here this morning. I keep voice keeps <laughs> It's going through Flux. puberty. It's Evidently, fine. it's yeah. kind of what it seems like. Mm -hmm. I'm totally fine. Then, <laughs> you know, like, get all choked up there. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind, yeah. of, kind of a disgrace. Anyways, <laughs> uh, on the weather scene here this morning, hot and dry day on tap and fire weather, a big talking point here today. Currently sitting at 53 in Great Falls. Humidity is continuing to drop as the morning plays out. Wind out of the southwest at 10 miles per hour. Again, that's going to be on the rise today. 57 in the capital right now on the Opportunity Bank. ICAM 53% humidity, some wind out of the west at three miles per hour. Guys are looking beautiful as always. They're a little red on the horizon. 56 degrees for the temperature, humidity at 50. Sneak peek toward your weekend here. So Saturday, still going to be a little bit cooler. We'll talk about this little cool down we're tracking, but it's going to last through Saturday. Then Sunday rolls around and we're going to get back into the high 80s and 90s across the board. So kind of a roller coaster ride temperature wise. Strong wind today increasing the fire danger than a cold front is going to move through. That's what's going to kind of back off those temperatures a little bit for the remainder of the work week and high pressure is going to rebuild on Sunday, getting us hot, likely for the tail end of the weekend and maybe even lasting through next week. More on your forecast is coming up shortly, Shannon. Jason, thank you. It is 601 on your Tuesday morning on Firewatch this morning. Crews continue to get a handle on a fire in Fergus County. Two wildfires broke out there Friday evening, while the smaller of the two is now 100% contained. The larger fire northwest of Winifred is still burning. According to firefighters, the Judith River Road fire is now 70% contained. At last check, its total acreage was around 1,100, indicating little growth since it broke out Friday night. Meanwhile, firefighters with the Helena Lewis and Clark National Forest say growth was minimal on the Fields Gulch fire. That's burning about six miles south of Lincoln. It is only about five acres. It is 0% contained. The Lincoln Ranger District's Type 4 team transitioned to Type 3 because of the complex terrain as well as the forecast. Crews established an anchor point to work from and build containment lines. A Type 1 and 2 helicopter are both working along with about 60 crew members. Right now, no evacuations, trail or road closures are in effect. A water tender will be spraying Dalton Mountain Road to keep the dust down. People driving in that area are asked to use caution. State public health leaders said Monday they're not aware of any COVID-19 tests that have been lost after concerns about potential missing tests were raised online. MTN's Jonathan Amberian has more on this issue. MTN News had been forwarded an online post that said about 7,000 COVID-19 tests might have been lost. We looked into those reports. The Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services, which has been overseeing COVID testing in the state, says it has not heard of any missing test results in the Helena area or elsewhere in Montana. In a statement Monday, a department spokesperson said, We believe there might be confusion as to the recent backlog of test results at Quest that has since been resolved. This number of tests was also 7,000. These tests have been processed and the results sent back to the ordering provider. Montana is one of several states that saw delays in getting COVID test results as the number of tests being processed at out-of-state labs spiked in recent weeks. The state is now working with another lab that has processed about 10,000 Montana tests. DPHHS says the turnaround time there has been about two to three days. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. One month ago, a Great Falls salon closed after two of their employees tested positive for coronavirus. That salon has since reopened. While it was closed for two weeks, management took the opportunity to sanitize the building and work to prevent any future outbreaks. Customers and staff now have more thorough sanitation stations in place and must complete temperature checks before entering the facility. Entry is also limited to clients in order to keep occupancy down. The owner of Studio Montage says while she is not seen a change in business, she has seen a change in her customers. When I'm in the salon, I have several people stop me every day thanking us for being so transparent and for shutting down and for um, putting the 
safety of the community first. So that's, it's just been very encouraging. Now, all of her employees have tested negative for coronavirus since the original outbreak. They've safely returned to work. Helena College, University of Montana is gearing up for the new year and changes for COVID-19. Students picked up CARES kits, which include a washable face covering, chamois cloths, and a spray bottle of sanitizer for cleaning their space on campus. Students and staff are asked this fall to take care of each other by cleaning work areas before they sit down and when they leave. Students are actively encouraged to stay home this fall if they aren't feeling well, and professors will work with them so their schoolwork doesn't suffer as a result. They spent a lot of time structuring their courses so that they're able to provide both face-to-face -face instruction, that experience that we're used to, but also find mechanisms to make sure the material is available for anyone who's not able to come to campus. Helena College will also be taking attendance this year for each class to help with contact tracing should a student or staff member test positive for COVID. The Montana State Health Department is reporting 65 new COVID cases. Cascade County has 54 active cases. Lewis and Clark, 56. More than 3,500 people have recovered so far. Well, masks have become commonplace for Montanans in public. One therapy business in Helena dons a different kind of mask. MTN's Jessica Nelson explains why. A good population of individuals we work with have speech sound disorders. In order for us to be able to effectively um, address their needs and provide great therapeutic intervention is for them to be able to see the place and manner of speech sounds. So if we're covering our mouth, then we're eliminating a lot of that. Delinda Radley is a speech language pathologist and she owns Speech Therapy Solutions Montana here in Helena. When the pandemic hit, she knew she had to create a safe way for her and her therapist to be able to reach their patients without the restrictions of full face coverings. So when we opened our doors, we all like were using see-through ones and I get compliments about it all the time. Every therapist in the building uses a mask with a see-through plastic window in order for their patients to better read their mouths and their mannerisms. Something Delinda says is important for a variety of people they serve. It's also very powerful for them to be able to see an actual individual show how to position their lips, their tongue, their teeth, their, all of those different things to be able to effectively do the sound. We don't realize how much, how much we miss on the nonverbals, just like even just like that, having that covered. Is that amazing? And there's one other element the clear masks bring that Delinda says we have all been missing. People love the smile, like they see it's so, it, and I just feel like, my gosh, that, we miss that. In Helena, Jessica Nelson, MTN News. President Trump's daily coronavirus briefing was interrupted Monday by a shooting just outside the White House grounds. The Secret Service says one of its officers opened fire on a suspect that was thought to be armed. The man was hospitalized after being wounded. The president returned to the podium after a break of about 10 minutes. We're taking a closer look at the chemical the EPA just approved to repel and kill bugs like mosquitoes, fleas and ticks. It's called nucadone and many people have been consuming it without knowing it. That's because it's found naturally in grapefruit and in cedar trees. Its distinct grapefruit smell has also been a staple ingredient in perfumes. The EPA found nucadone is perfectly safe for people and pets, as well as mammals, birds, fish, and bees. With the EPA's approval comes a requirement that all products using it from now on be registered and tested. Nucadone could become a preferred alternative to synthetic bug sprays. The Trump administration is expected to relax rules on methane emissions. The new rules will lift regulations set by the Obama administration that require oil and gas companies to use technology to detect and fix methane leaks in pipes and storage tanks. The Environmental Protection Agency says the new rules will free the oil and gas industries from what it called crippling regulations. The Trump administration is expected to announce the new rule before Friday. It's 6.09 here on your Tuesday. Still to come on Montana this morning, a father-daughter duo of Tom and Cece have a look back at some positive moments of the past week next.
And later in your weather forecast, definitely tracking a heightened fire danger throughout the state here today. As for your fire weather variables, temperatures a big factor looking at humidity around 15% gusty wind as well here today. Something to keep in mind chain fires. You get that loose chain dangling as you're pulling the camper or the boat can throw some sparks into vegetation. Your forecast is coming up shortly. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Welcome back. Beautiful start to the day. A little bit of color there on the horizon as we look live over Helena on this Tuesday, August 11th. Time now is 612. Welcome back. Legion baseball came to an end over the weekend and fall sports practice at the high school level begins on Friday. Tom and CeCe Wiley are gearing up for the return of local sports, but first it's time for another edition of Social Distance Game Changers. Hey everybody, Tom and Cece back here with another edition of Game Changers and we have a new friend we want to introduce you to. This Yay. is Gigi. She is a two month old kitty. Ooh. We adopted her from the Great Falls Animal Shelter and she is going to help us out with this week's Game Changers. Oh. NCAA football might have been pushed to spring but nothing stops the grind at home. This week we taught Cece how to do a touchdown celebration. <laughs> At number five, Moose on the Loose. A female cow came to investigate the big city and hung out down by the river's edge in Great Falls for an urban adventure. Eventually, she was captured and relocated to the Little Belt Mountains. At number four, COVID-19 has shut down most live music, but you can still catch the Great Falls Municipal Band every Wednesday at the Gibson Park Band Shell, one of the last remaining city bands in the country. At number three, Legion Baseball wrapped up in Montana over the weekend. Congratulations to the state double a champion Bozeman Bucks and the state single A champion Billings Blue Jays for capturing state titles. At number two, Mid State Signs in Winifred is now printing custom face masks. That way you can recognize your friends when you see them in the grocery store. And at number one, a legendary aircraft made a stop in Great Falls last week. World War B-25 bomber Made in the Shade flew 15 combat missions and is now touring the country over the summer. All right, folks, and if you want to help us out, send your video to sports at krtv.com or home highlights at krtv.com. And CC, Gigi, and I will include them each Monday in Game Changers. Reporting from home, Tom, Gigi, and CC, MTN News. Just keeps getting cuter. Now we add a kitty to the mix. All right, for the latest on the delayed start to high school football and volleyball, you can visit montanasports.com. Uh, how am I supposed? How am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, you need a puppy with you. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Anyways, all right. So yesterday in Great Falls on the Almanac, 87 was the temperature. Average would be 84. We're gonna get even hotter today. We're gonna hit that 87 degree mark before the afternoon even wraps up here. 90s today on tap. As for Helena, 88 was the daytime high, right on track with average there for the most part today. We're gonna see those temperatures getting hot about 80 degrees by the noon hour again, 90s this afternoon. More on your forecast and a heightened fire danger next. Storm tracker weather starts now with Jason Laird. Tracking a hot and uh, a dry day throughout central Montana. I'm Jason Laird. Well, uh, overall, we're starting off at about 52 in Great Falls, 57 in the capital, mid 50s in northeastern Montana. Humidity level is a big talking point here today. Now, the humidity percentage when we're looking at the relative humidity that is uh, reflected a little bit by the temperature there. So just keep in mind, uh, this is going to drop pretty substantially as the day plays out. Normally, we would be a little bit higher than this already at this hour. 90 degrees on tap today for Great Falls, 90 one in the capital looking at the mid 90s in northeastern Montana. So with the hot air, dry air at that and some wind in the mix, the National Weather Service has put a fire weather warning into effect or that will go into effect at the noon hour here today for all of central Montana and uh, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Here's how everything is going to play out for us. So this map is kind of cool in the sense that it combines the humidity percentage, the wind and the temperature and shows us where some of the worst fire weather conditions are going to be. So as the day starts to play out here between between Great Falls and Cutbank, those stronger winds coming off the Rocky Mountain front. That's where that fire danger is really going to ramp up because the wind, uh, that wind will also help to kind of dry out the air a little bit. So very, very high fire danger there just north of Great Falls, touching into Great Falls. We're going to see wind today, likely wind gusts between 30 and 40 miles per hour, sustained at about 15 to 20 miles per hour today. 
It will kind of let up a little bit overnight, but again, that fire weather warning stays in effect through Wednesday. Overnight lows 53 in Great Falls, 54 in the capital, looking at a couple of low 60s in northeastern Montana. Tomorrow, not one, but two little batches of colder air are going to move in. That's going to back daytime highs off about 8 degrees or so throughout central Montana, but it is going to keep us windy. That's the main reason that that fire weather warning is going to stay in effect tomorrow is it's going to stay windy and we're still going to have dry air. However, temperature won't be as big of a factor and some building clouds then overnight Wednesday into Thursday. And uh, so in other words, if you wanted to get out and see the meteor shower tonight is going to be your best bet as some building clouds are expected Wednesday night into Thursday. 83 then tomorrow for your daytime high quite a bit cooler due to the passage of that cold front. However, the eastern plains still staying very, very hot. But on Thursday, that cooler air will start to impact them as well, taking us down to 79, the capital at 80 and looking at the high 70s and low 80s along the high line as well. A little bit bigger picture as we head toward the weekend. That colder air mass is going to move out. However, that cooler air is going to stay kind of camped out over the state. And that's going to stick with us till about mm, Saturday night into Sunday. That's when our next high pressure ridge is going to build in. That one is going to keep us very, very hot as we head through the later half of the weekend. So 90 today in Gray Falls, looking at the uh, 79 degree mark on Thursday and then staying pretty mild, but getting hot again on on Sunday. As for the capital, 91 today, mid 80s, cooling off and then hot to get on Sunday. And to wrap things up in Cutbank here, another windy one on tap, 84 today. We'll drop back to the 70s, 73 on Saturday, then back up into the 80s, uh, tail end of this weekend, Shannon. Jason, thanks. People living around Cascade are saying they're without power this morning. Northwestern Energy's outage map shows more than 1,000 customers without power right now. According to the site, power could be restored by around noon. Well, stay with us. We're going to celebrate birthday and anniversary when Montana This Morning continues. From MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. 26 here on your Tuesday morning and time now for birthdays and, well, one birthday and one anniversary. One anniversary, yep. That's right, so let's get right to it. Uh, this one says, happy 66, sweetie pie from Ruby Aww. and Jack. So, Deborah Brust, big happy birthday to you. Yeah, and we have an anniversary to celebrate today, too. That's for Elijah and Shayna Combs says, I love you more and more each day. That Aww. was Shana who submitted that. So happy anniversary to you. And of course, if you would like to submit a birthday or anniversary for us to announce here on Montana this morning, just head to our website right on the top of the page there. Just click on that. It'll take you right to the form. Just fill that out. It'll send it our way. If you can do it a couple days in advance, that's always helpful, but we'll do our best to Get them announced here in Montana this morning. That's right. And on the weather scene, we've been talking about it all day. Hot and dry conditions here expected. It's Currently beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Yeah. yeah, let me back that up. We'll just kind of sit there and look at it. Ah, isn't that nice? It is nice. It's, it's a very just like it makes background. me happy. Just like a peaceful yeah, way to yeah. start the day. Nice little sunrise mm -hmm. there. OK, on the Opportunity Bank, I can. We're looking at 53 right now. The wind is going to pick up sustained about 15 to even 20 at times, 30 to 40 miles per hour in the terms of wind gusts. As for the capital here today, 57 degrees and sunny right now. Looking good out there. Some wind, but again, that wind's really going to ramp up. As for your uh, smoke plume forecast, not really much today. Uh, we've got just enough of a breeze out there to kind of carry that smoke on its way. And again, wind increasing, so kind of more of the smoke is concentrated to the immediate vicinities of where there actually is fire. So air quality today looking good as well. So, so far, uh, so far, so good in those terms. All right, hot and dry today. High fire danger, 90 degrees in Great Falls, 91 in the capital. Glasgow, 94 and sunny and mostly sunny and 84 in Cutbank. All right, don't go away. Montana this morning is back in just a couple of minutes. Coming up this half hour on Montana This Morning, Great Falls Public Schools unveils their latest plan for the upcoming school year. Plus, COVID-19 cases prompt changes to the training academy for Montana law enforcement officers. And later, sales tax debate. One Montana lawmaker unveils his plan for Montana's money. Montana This Morning starts now. From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. 
Thanks for joining us here on this Tuesday morning. It's August 11th and we're glad to have you along. I'm Shannon New. I'm Jason Laird waking up to a pretty mild start to the day. Mm -hmm. Wind is really going to be the nuisance mm -hmm. item here today. Mm -hmm. And with that wind, of course, the fire danger really starting to crank up as well. Yeah, not a fan. Not no. a fan of the wind. Yeah, no. wind. <sighs> Yeah, not not a breeze not the is okay, but yeah, no. breeze breeze is tolerable, but now pretty strong wind today. So 53 in Gray Falls couldn't ask for a nicer view, though, out of the uh, U.S. Bank. I can as for the capital here at this hour, 57 degrees there. Humidity is really going to drop as well. So again, playing into the high fire danger throughout central Montana. 50 degrees in Lewistown right now. Sun just starting to break over the range there and fishing forecast over the next couple of days. Looking at the low 90s today. Quite a bit of wind though, so if you are taking the boat out, it's going to be a bit choppy. Fire danger today, still windy Wednesday, much cooler though through about Saturday, and we're going to start to warm up Saturday into Sunday. So overall forecast headlines, strong wind is really what's going to contribute to the high fire danger today. Cold front is going to keep us breezy tomorrow, but back the temperatures off a little bit as we head through the remainder of the work week. But then again, high pressure is going to rebuild as we head towards Sunday, and that is going to get us hot again next week. We'll kind of break down that forecast give you a couple of the details revolving around that coming up very shortly. Shannon. Jason, thank you. Great Falls Public Schools will officially reopen on August 26th. MTN's Matt Holzaffel was at the Board of Trustees meeting late last night. He breaks down the plan for the upcoming school year. Monday night's Great Falls Public Schools meeting featured hours of discussion, including lengthy talks on the finalized reopening plan for the 2020-2021 school year. In the end, the plan passed with a vote of 5-2, to two, with trustees Bill Bronson and Teresa Schreiner voting against adopting the plan. The plan is a very good one, but I think it's a plan uh, that's most appropriate when we have better slowed the spread of COVID-19 in this community. Schreiner echoed that statement, saying she approved of the plan, but didn't feel that the timing was right. It's not that I was against opening schools, I just hopefully wanted to open schools at a later date, so I just didn't feel a rush. Some of the highlights of the plan include offering both face-to-face -face and remote learning options to students, requiring masks in most settings, limiting spectators at student events, and rearranging some schedules to make physical distancing easier. We've had to uh, sit down and, and work through a lot of the protocols and a lot of the um, the scenarios and so forth together with our health officials, with our community and um, and with our staff and our unions and so forth. So we have to be flexible and adaptable. Board members agree that this plan is likely to change between now and the start of school on August 26th and even beyond that. That's one thing we've learned and seen throughout this pandemic is that things crop up and come at you that were unexpected. And so you've got to be able to be adaptable and and flexible to deal with those things and then collaborative. You can find the full details of the reopening plan on our website. In Great Falls, Matt Holzaffel, MTN News. Should any students or staff members test positive for COVID-19, the district will work with the Cascade City County Health Department to determine the best course of action. The Montana Law Enforcement Academy has closed for two weeks following a positive COVID-19 test by a student. Staff were notified on Friday morning of the positive case and closed following the campus's COVID protocol. The entire class and the instructors that had direct contact with the student will be quarantining for 14 days and facilities will be thoroughly cleaned. The academy is expected to resume classes August 24th and cadets will train through their weekends to make up for lost time. Law Enforcement Academy will also be increasing some of their COVID protocols once students return. We had been training uh, all through COVID and with uh, uh, previous classes, we'd lock them down and not allow them to leave campus. So then I already told the class on the way out the door Friday, you know, plan on being locked down for the duration when you come back, just to limit exposure in the community. Steiner praised the cadet for being honest and upfront from the beginning about their symptoms and test results. Students at the academy were pre-screened for COVID before arriving and monitored daily. The Montana State Health Department is reporting 65 new cases. Cascade County has 54 active cases. Lewis and Clark has 56. More than 3,500 people have recovered so far. Well, masks have become commonplace for Montanans in public. One therapy business in Helena dons a different kind of mask. MTN's Jessica Nelson explains why. Choo -choo. Uh -oh. 
good population of individuals we work with have speech sound disorders in order for us to be able to effectively um, address their needs and provide great therapeutic intervention is for them to be able to see the place and manner of speech sounds. So if we're covering our mouth, then we're eliminating a lot of that. Delinda Radley is a speech language pathologist and she owns Speech Therapy Solutions Montana here in Helena. When the pandemic hit, she knew she had to create a safe way for her and her therapist to be able to reach their patients without the restrictions of full face coverings. So when we opened our doors, we all like were using see-through ones and I get compliments about it all the time. Every therapist in the building uses a mask with a see-through plastic window in order for their patients to better read their mouths and their mannerisms. Something Delinda says is important for a variety of people they serve. It's also very powerful for them to be able to see an actual individual show how to position their lips, their tongue, their teeth, their, all of those different things to be able to effectively do the sound. We don't realize how much, how much we miss on the nonverbals. Just like even just like that, having that covered. Is that amazing? And there's one other element the clear masks bring that Delinda says we have all been missing. People love the smile, like they see it's so, and I just feel like, my gosh, that we miss that. In Helena, Jessica Nelson, MTN News. People in the Cascade area this morning are reporting a power outage. Northwestern Energy's outage map shows more than 1,000 customers without power right now. According to the site, that should be restored by about noon today. Well, still to come here on Montana this morning, we'll hear from Montana's congressional delegation about delivery delays with USPS. And later in your weather forecast. From MTN News, you're watching. And later, I guess, in your weather forecast here, looking at a little bit of wind here to start things out. And again, it is going to be a windy one here today, tracking wind gusts at about 20 to 30 and 30 to 40 miles per hour later this afternoon, really ramping up the fire danger throughout central Montana. More on your forecast is coming up. Welcome to MTN News. You're watching Montana This Morning. Welcome back. It's a beautiful start to the day here in Great Falls, looking live over the electric city through our iCam on this Tuesday, August 11th. We're so glad to have you along. It is now 639, just about 20 minutes, 21 minutes away from the top of the hour. Montana's congressional delegation doesn't always agree on controversial issues, especially when it involves the Trump administration. But when it comes to concern about action taken by the new Postmaster General and its effect on the Postal Service, they're all speaking out. MTN Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison explains why. In memos made public last month, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy said he is restricting overtime by postal workers and taking other cost-cutting steps that could delay mail delivery. He has said the financially strapped Postal Service needs to operate more like a business. But Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester says Congress has appropriated funds to help the Postal Service weather the coronavirus pandemic, but that money has not been released. We've got a head of the Postal Service that wants to destroy the Postal Service. He's doing everything he can do to destroy it. We've got to hold that person accountable and we've got to make sure the Postal Service is there. The Republican members of Montana's delegation aren't happy either. Both U.S. Senator Steve Daines and Representative Greg Gianforte sent letters to DeJoy last week demanding that he reverse directives that are delaying mail delivery times. Daines and Tester also are co-sponsors of a bill introduced a month ago that would create a $25 billion emergency fund to keep the Postal Service afloat and require DeJoy to submit a plan for the service's long-term solvency. I am concerned about that, particularly for a state like Montana, where rural communities are heavily dependent on the Postal Service, particularly for health care. Uh, so many senior citizens and other Montanans receive their medications through the United States Postal Service. Senator Tester said a well-functioning Postal Service is even more vital now as millions more Americans will likely be voting by mail this coming election. Not only is the mail important for just doing regular old business and keeping folks healthy, but vote by mail is kind of nice in a state like Montana, and we had a record turnout during the primary because of it. I believe that this democracy is set up so everybody that's a citizen here should have an opportunity to vote. So what happens now? As we've reported before on this issue, there's always plenty of tough talk in Congress about fixing and preserving the Postal Service. But here we are, still waiting for action. 
Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MDN News. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Mike Cooney said he's taking his opposition to a sales tax one step further by asking voters themselves to ban it permanently. He also reiterated his charge that his Republican opponent, Greg Gianforte, is a sales tax supporter. Cooney and his running mate, Casey Schreiner, said they're launching a referendum to place a statewide sales tax ban in Montana's constitution. The referendum needs the signatures of more than 51,000 registered voters to make it on the general election ballot in 2022. Cooney says the ban is needed to permanently block Republicans like Gianforte from advancing and passing a statewide sales tax. The Gianforte campaign dismissed Cooney's proposal as a publicity stunt and said Gianforte has made it clear he opposes a sales tax under any circumstances. Cooney, however, says he doesn't believe Gianforte and that voters need to send him a message. Sales tax, no statewide sales tax, not today. Not two years from now, not ever. Now let me repeat that, just in case any multimillionaires from New Jersey are listening. No statewide sales tax. Not today, not two years from now, not ever. The Montana Republican Party also noted that Cooney requested a sales tax bill in 2005 while he was a state senator. Cooney said that was just a request for research on the issue and that he voted no that year on a Republican sales tax bill that failed. Well, I'm next year weather forecast hot, dry and windy conditions really contributing to a heightened fire danger today. Fire weather forecast. We're going to get well into the 80s, 90s this afternoon. Uh, humidity levels less than about 15 to 16 percent there. So very dry and again, strong wind as well. Going to be looking at temperatures in the capital, also getting well into the 80s and early 90s. Very low humidity level and some gusty winds as well later this afternoon. We'll break down that extended forecast coming up next. Thanks. Forty seven here on your Tuesday morning, just about uh, 13, right? Yeah, how to do yep. the math. Mm -hmm. 13 away from seven <laughs> o'clock. Well, the Perseids meteor shower will peak overnight tonight. It's known for producing a large number of meteors and fireballs, which Ooh. last uh, longer than the average meteor Perseids. Uh, meteors are caused by dust and debris left uh, behind from the tail of the comet Swift Tuttle. I love that name, Swift <laughs> Tuttle. So NASA says the best viewing will be from about midnight, 2 a.m. until dawn Wednesday morning, though you can still see the Perseids through later this month. NASA says the moon's position above the horizon might make peak viewing a little bit tough, but facing northeast should help improve your chances. You can watch online too. NASA will have a live stream that starts at 7 o'clock our time until dawn on Wednesday. Yeah, super cool. It mm -hmm. should be a good night to, to, to see it. You okay. know, I mean, the moon again, a little bit bright positioning. But it's kinda... not like we have a bunch of cloud cover. No, that should be no, problem, it should be clear, so. clear okay. skies. I mean, we have enough wind that, you know, any of the smoke from wildfires is going to pretty much move on. Yeah. So good. should be a really good night. So, uh, so you can get up your when alarm. we do. Yeah, get up when we do. Yeah, yeah. 1 a.m. Yeah, join us. Get up and yeah. uh, watch it with us. Yeah, it should <laughs> be a fun time. But uh, here's the actual forecast conditions tonight for the uh, meteor shower. So again, as Shannon was saying, make sure you look northeast. That's going to peak tonight through August 13th, but we are going to have some building clouds over the next couple of days. I'll tell you why momentarily. The rate 40 to 50 meteors per hour. That's pretty impressive, but in Great Falls looking at about 53 tonight. Clear skies out there as well. All right. As for currently, we're looking at 52 in Great Falls, 57 in the capital as you're waking up mid 50s in northeastern Montana, really going to see some dry air move in relative humidity right now. Not bad, but it is going to deteriorate as the day plays out and hot air on top of it. 90 in Great Falls, 91 in the capital, mid 90s throughout the eastern plains. So with the hot, dry air and some wind in the mix, fire weather warning has been put in place by the National Weather Service for all the highlighted regions there. That's going to go into effect at noon today and take us through Wednesday evening. So this graphic combines all those elements, the humidity, the temperature and the wind and shows us where the highest fire danger or where the weather related uh, elements would be to that fire danger. So in other words, just north of Great Falls is where we're really going to see the strongest wind and the lowest humidity here today and those very, very strong winds right along the immediate vicinity of the Rocky Mountain front continuing to ramp up the fire danger. All of the highlighted region there again is going to be in the elevated fire.
fire danger today. That's not to say if a fire was to kick off in eastern Montana, it couldn't spread really rapidly, but these are going to be where those weather, weather elements really are prime for fire weather throughout the day here today. All right, 53 for your overnight low in Great Falls, 54 in the capital, some 60s throughout the eastern plains here. Tomorrow we've got one and two cold fronts moving through, so that is going to help out a little bit with temperatures, kind of backing things off to just add or below average. But with the passage of those fronts, we are going to see an increase in wind. The first front will kind of kick off some clouds. Can't rule out a shower or two out of the second front, most of which will be confined to the mountains, very isolated. But again, an increase in clouds following that second front. So in other words, again, if you wanted to check out the meteor shower tonight, much better than tomorrow night. 83 following that cold front, 85 in the capital tomorrow. Still, though, very, very hot throughout the eastern plains. Those temperatures will back off a little bit, though, once that cooler air finally makes its way into that region. On Thursday, 79 and 80 in the capital. That cooler air mass is going to continue to offer up some cooler temperatures following today, and that's going to take us into the weekend. However, it's not going to stick around too terribly long. Another high pressure ridge is going to build as we head toward the weekend, getting those temperatures hot again. Uh, on Sunday into Monday. So 90 degrees today in Great Falls, 83 then on Wednesday, a little bit cooler through Saturday and then ramping the temperatures back up on Sunday into Monday. As for the capital, 90. Oh, we got uh, stocks there today, evidently. <laughs> and uh, you those, can do the stock uh, were they report up? too. Were they up, Shan? Were the it's stocks mixed. up? Mixed. Mixed. Yeah. Okay. All right. 91 today. And then we're looking <laughs> at cooler weather until Monday, Shannon. All right, so as we were saying, it was a mixed day on Wall Street. The Dow rallied 357 points. NASDAQ lost 42. S&P 500 gained 9. The Pentagon is speeding up access to 5G Internet service by sharing some of its military airwaves. The Trump administration says certain radio spectrums used for defense systems can be freed up without compromising national security. It will be auctioned off next December for use in 2022. The move is expected to help the U.S. compete with China in the race to build a wide-scale network of 5G Internet. TikTok could sue the Trump administration as early as this morning. That lawsuit is expected to argue Pre President Trump does not have the power to ban the app in the U.S. through executive order. President Trump signed an executive order last week that would effectively ban TikTok for national security reasons after 45 days unless it's sold to a new owner. Under the order, anyone who violates that order could be fined up to $300,000 or given jail time or both. Here at home, Northwestern Energy is warning customers to be prepared for possible scam phone calls from people claiming to be from the utility company. The utility expects customers will get calls claiming their bill is overdue and demanding immediate payment or their power will be cut off. This type of scam is expected now that the moratorium for cutting off utility services has been lifted. Northwestern Energy assures customers they will not call demanding immediate payment. Anyone who thinks they're being scammed should immediately hang up and call Northwestern Energy. A devastating storm known as a derecho tears through the Midwest with hurricane-like winds. Plus, will there be college football this fall? Find out how some players are hoping to save the season. Coming up on CBS This Morning. Welcome back. It's 655 on your Tuesday. Let's get you out the door with some of the day's top stories on this August 11th, 2020. Firefighters continue to get a handle on a fire in Fergus County. The Judith River Road fire near Winifred is now 70% contained. At last check, the fire's total acreage was around 1100, indicating little growth since it broke out Friday night. The Fields Gulch fire burning about six miles south of Lincoln. The fire is about five acres with 0% containment. Crews did establish an anchor point to work from and build containment lines. A Type 1 and Type 2 helicopter are both working along with about 60 crew members. Right now there are no evacuations, trail or road closures. A water tender will be spraying Dalton Mountain Road to keep the dust down. The Montana State Health Department's reporting 65 new COVID cases. Cascade County has 54 active cases. Lewis and Clark has 56. More than 3,500 people have recovered. The Montana Law Enforcement Academy has closed for a couple of weeks following a positive COVID-19 test there by a student. Staff were notified on Friday of that case and 
closed following the campus's COVID protocol. The entire class and the instructors that had direct contact with the student will be quarantining for 14 days and facilities will be thoroughly cleaned. The academy is expected to resume classes August 24th and cadets will train through their weekends to make up for lost time. Helena College, University of Montana is gearing up for the new school year and some changes due to COVID. On Monday, students picked up CARES kits, which include washable face coverings, chamois cloths, and a spray bottle of sanitizer for cleaning their space on campus. Students and staff are asked this fall to take care of each other by cleaning work areas before they sit down and when they leave. And on the weather scene, as you're heading out the door here this morning, it is going to be a hot, dry, and windy one. So in other words, the fire danger on the rise. U.S. Bank ICAM reading in at 58 degrees already. Going to be uh, 60 here before we know it. 47% humidity really starting to drop fast here. As again, dry air is going to really blanket over the state, ramping up the fire danger. 57 in the capital here today on the Opportunity Bank ICAM and looking at a little bit of a breeze out of the southeast at 5 miles per hour. There it goes. As for your fire variables today, temperature is going to be a big one. Looking at the low 90s all throughout central Montana, a lot of dry air, humidity percentage less than 15% and uh, wind about 30 to 40 miles per hour today sustained around 15 or so. And again, a lot of dry vegetation out there just contributing to the already high fire danger. So we do have a fire weather warning in effect for the kind of pink areas there. This graphic is combining those humidity levels, wind and temperature all together, showing us where the worst fire weather will be. And that's going to be uh, from basically the capital all the way up to Cut Bank, right along the immediate vicinity of the Rocky Mountain front. That's not to say that the remainder of the state doesn't have a high fire danger, but this area in particular is going to have the strongest wind and the lowest humidity level kind of letting up a little bit this evening. Today's forecast 90 degrees in Great Falls, 91 in the capital. Plenty of sunshine to go around Glasgow at about 94. Cut Bank 84 today again and just windy, windy, windy out there. Be very, very careful. You know, a lot of producers out trying to catch up with, you know, harvest and hang and all that sort of thing. And even if you're pulling the boat out to the lake, you know, the chain there dangling on the yeah. road can always Spark. be of concern as well. All right, well, thanks so much for joining us here on your Tuesday. Of course, you can get updates throughout the day online, social media, and our app. That's right, and stay handy uh, with that Storm Tracker Weather app as well. We can keep you up to date there. All right, we got CBS this morning next. Have a great Tuesday.